From far away, stars are tiny dots in the night sky. Up close, they are giant ball of burning gases. But stars don't remain the same always. The nuclear fusion, which is powering the star, will eventually uh, use up all its fuel. And the star will die. A massive star, in its end phase, dies in a supernova explosion. It almost throws away all its mass. What remains becomes a black hole from a nothing, not even light can escape. The concept of black hole is not a new concept. In 1687, Newton published his landmark work in form of a book, Principia. There he proposed the universal laws of gravity. Using a thought experiment involving a very tall mountain and a cannonball, he derived the expression for the escape velocity. In 1783, English clergyman John Mitchell find out that a star which is around 500 times more massive than the sun will have an escape velocity more than the speed of light. He calls such type of star the dark star. In early 20th century, Einstein proposed his two theories of relativity, special theory of relativity and general theory of relativity. Special theory of relativity is famous for the equation E equal to mc square and the general theory of relativity describes gravity in a completely new way. According to general theory of relativity, mass and energy bend space and time. That's why anything which travels closer to a large mass appears to bend. A consequence of this idea is that even light travels closer to a large mass like a star, then it will bend. Unlike Newton's gravity, general theory of relativity does not describe gravity using a single equation. Gr describes the gravity using a set of 10 equations, and Einstein called them the field equations. Einstein proposed his theory of gravity in 1915, and just after a few months, German physicist Carl Schwarzschild found out a solution of that theory. Schwarzschild found out that near a very massive object, there can be some reason in space-time from which nothing, not even light can escape. He called that place the black holes. Initially, people thought that the black holes are some mathematical solution and there is no real black hole exists in the universe. However, within a decade or so, the understanding about stars life circle improved and people thought that black holes can be a reality. But how do you detect an object which does not emit lights? Our telescope cannot detect them directly. So, of course, we have to use some indirect method for detecting the, a black hole. Black holes doesn't emit lights. However, black holes are really strong gravitational fields. So, scientists look for places where a black hole is in close proximity to another star. One of such places is binary star system. In binary star system, there are two stars which orbit around each other due to their gravitational force. And people order binary star system in our galaxy. Now what will happen if one of those stars is a black hole? In such cases, we can only observe one of those stars. We cannot detect the other star because that's a black hole and that doesn't emit light. So by observing the orbit of that star, we can find out how much mass is there in that black hole. And in this way, we can detect black holes. Since we can observe a black hole, is there any way to find out the size of a black hole? According to Einstein's field equation, the radius of the surface of the sphere from where nothing can escape is directly proportional to the mass of that black hole. And he called this radius the Schwarzschild radius. Of course, in an honor to the physicist Carl Schwarzschild. The surface of the sphere is called at, uh, known as the event horizon. From where nothing, nothing can escape. Anything enter, anything enter inside the event horizon is gone from the rest of the universe. So if you know the mass of a black hole, then it's fairly easy to calculate the size of a black hole. But how do you know the mass of a black hole? Okay, it's quite easy. So we have to just send a, some spacecraft which can orbit around the black hole. Now like any other orbiting bodies like Earth orbiting Sun or Moon orbiting Earth, the size of that orbit and the time period of the orbit will tell you the uh, mass of that black hole. 
But if you don't have a spacecraft to orbit around the black hole, then you have to take the orbit of some component star. Black holes come in various sizes. If a black hole is created from a tiny star, then the mass of that black hole will be of the order of the mass of that star. We call this type of black hole the stellar mass black holes. But black holes can be bigger, much bigger. According to astronomers, each and every galaxy has some black hole in its center. And the mass of that black hole can be few billion of solar masses. We call them the supermassive black holes. Now in our universe, almost all the stars or planets rotate around its own axis. So black holes can also have their angular momentum. Now how do we measure the angular momentum of a black hole? Okay, so when, it, when a black hole rotates, it doesn't rotate itself. It will drag the space-time around it. This creates a current in the space-time. So if we throw to probe to orbit the black hole uh, into opposite direction, then the probe which is orbiting along the current will have a lesser time period than the probe which is orbiting in the opposite direction. The space-time current is so huge that it creates a region around the event horizon of that black hole. And this region is called the ergosphere. Anything, even light, it goes into the ergosphere, then it will start rotating around the, around the current and it will directly, it will go to the event horizon. And once it go to the event horizon, it disappear from our universe. Black holes can also have charges, but charged black hole doesn't occur in universe. That's simply because universe is full of charged particles. So even if a charged black hole occurred in universe, then it will just simply attract the oppositely charged particles and it will get neutral within almost no time. So these are the only three properties of a black hole. It's mass, angular momentum and charge. And using these three properties of this black hole, we can describe the entire black hole. It does not have any color, nothing, nothing else. Physicists call this the Neuer theorem. Now we know how the black hole looks from outside, but what's inside a black hole? Well, nobody knows because nobody can go inside a black hole. But if Einstein's field equation can describe black hole from outside, then you should describe the black hole from inside also. So you can use Einstein's field equation to describe how black hole looks inside it. To solve the field equations inside a black hole, scientists consider two different cases rotating black holes and non-rotating black holes. The case of non-rotating black holes are simpler. In a non-rotating black holes, all the mass inside the black hole will collapse to a single point at its center, which is known as the singularity. In case of rotating black hole, this, the singularity is not the point at the, at the center, but of a, a sphere of some radius and all the matter will fall in that singularity. So black holes are really interesting things. Scientists discovered lots of things about black holes and they are trying to find out more. Thank you.